Last Pint Productions presents the New Way Podcast. The New Way contains adult content and is recorded in advance. The following episode was originally recorded on August 24th, 2021. Listener discretion is advised. So you were in Vietnam, if I'm not mistaken? Yeah. Were you in the shit? Yeah, I was in the shit. Last night, Darth Vader came down from Planet Vulcan and told me that if I didn't take Lorraine out, that he'd melt my brain. Here's how you get him. He pulls a knife, you pull a gun. He sends one of yours to the hospital, you send one of his to the morgue. We came, we saw, we kicked its ass. Everybody wants to be naked and famous. Everybody wants to be just like me, I'm naked. Will you help teach me about this? What is it? A new way. Hello and welcome once again to the New Wave Podcast, where we break down pop culture. Even if you want to, we're still going to do it for you. I'm your host, <laughs> Matt Shank. Just trying to get in there before Nick can say it this time. I am joined in studio by my co-host, Mr. Benjamin Scott Wilson. I am present. And, and Nicholas Santa Croce coming in from L.A. Hello, Peter. <laughs> Coming in hot <laughs> in his in his Iron Maiden uh, cutoff T-shirt. I just love this so much. And it's and it is legitimately cut off. I use scissors. Wow. For the you know, yeah. it's I actually uh, I, I, I cut off my my shirt. <laughs> under I thought too. that Iron oh. Maiden T-shirts were contractually obligated to come without sleeves. <laughs> they have yeah, fall off sleeves. Too. They're like transformers. I, I was very upset when I had to cut off my own Iron Maiden sleeves. <laughs> you you saw, in, you in. saw red, and you were like, "No, this has to go." Yeah, this this will not stand. This aggression. This <laughs> is exactly. Uh, we have a great show prepared for you today. Um, I know Ben, you mentioned a, a story earlier that I'm excited about. Oh, I, God. I, I found this. There was this <laughs> clip you're... on Reddit um, that I I sent out to a few people because it made me laugh so hard that basically this. Guy hires a woman to dress. It looks like a small lady dressed up as Sasquatch, like the Jack Link's Sasquatch for his kid's and, and birthday. That's that's, a, that's an important detail. It's a very competent. It's a scary good. Looking, it's yeah, a good costume. Sasquatch. It's fucking terrifying, and and, and it, it has, has it's in a tutu, but, but yes. still. And the kids, in of course, freak out. But the way the video is shot is the Sasquatch is like outside of the room, <laughs> and you can't quite see it. And all I could think of is it's the scene in Signs where like all the kids are at the party and the alien is out there, and they're like shaky cam. And I mean, it was amazing. And then Ben mentioned he has I a wanna, Sasquatch wanna... story. Real quick, if any of our listeners want to recut this viral video to the It Follows theme, I would highly appreciate it. But ben, your anecdote. Um, it, 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 it's, it's only kind of slightly funny because I, I felt like I was like, well, I'll share it on the, the podcast. Because uh, our so podcast yeah, I, I, is only slightly it's funny. Exactly. It's I, one of my B-list stories. I, so I, 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 um, <laughs> anyway, so a, a couple months ago, for the first time, we took the girls to Universal uh, they've now gone a couple of times. They went for their birthday, but this is back in June. And so, uh, they did not know where they were going. We had bought them passes and we were doing a whole surprise. We picked them up from school. We were basically throwing them in the car and we were driving North until they started asking questions. And so they were on the, the I, they were on the iPad and they, we were like an hour North. We're like near Port St. Lucie and Luna was just like, ah. Because we said we, hey, we're going out to eat dinner, and uh, and they were like, where are we going? And, and uh, Beth was like, well, we, <laughs> we maybe have a surprise. And, and Margo's like, where are we going? And I said, we're going to the Sasquatch Museum. <laughs> and then we played off for the entire rest of the ride that we were going to a Sasquatch Museum in Orlando that was new and that I really wanted to go to. Tra- that tracks. And so it, I, I came up with that on the spot. I just, it is a place you would like to go to. I yes. blurted it out. And I was like, so then it just became this whole thing. But th- <laughs> let me tell you how sweet <laughs> how sweet my damn kids are. Is so they were finally like, like Margo was like, oh. I don't want to go to the Sasquatch Museum. And Lou was like, <laughs> okay, I- I'm excited. I'm excited about the Sasquatch Museum. Or whatever. So then we're going the rest of the way and they're watching the iPad. So as we're driving into Universal, there are fucking roller coasters on the left side of the road. And they're like, what is that? What is that? And we're oh, like, oh, it's, it's, an, it's an amusement park. And Luna goes, can, can we go there after the Sasquatch Museum? <laughs> <laughs> and 
we like, okay, well, we have to break the break the ruse right now. She, they are they are. We're going, sorry, Luna. Yeah. We're not really Go, going, going to the to Sasquatch, Sasquatch Museum. Museum. That's where we're going. It's Universal Studios. Yeah, my um my parents decided to do similar trickery on me when I was uh, I believe. Uh, 11, uh, turning 11 years old for my birthday, they told me they got me tickets to Cyrano de Bergerac and, <laughs> and we were going to have dinner at the Melting Pot and then go watch a production of Cyrano de Bergerac and boy did I play it off like that's exactly what I wanted to do on my 11th <laughs> birthday and I thanked them so much and I was so excited to go to this and then we went up seeing David Copperfield which I was very very excited about but I played like my dad was like man I started to feel real bad because I was just like oh I, I like the movie Roxanne you know th this that that's based on this play uh so I'm, I'm sure this will be as funny as the movie with, with Steve Martin and 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 the woman from Splash and yeah, that was uh so your kids will have a similar story for one time, time my one time my mom uh said she was taking me to Disney World and uh then she did because she loves me. She cares about me. <laughs> She's not a monster. And then you saw well, Michael Jackson, but that's a story from my dad. We did we did swing story. by <laughs> <laughs> Luna style on the way back. And, and then we beat him to death with his own shoes. I, I beat him to death with his own shoes. <laughs> Today, I mean, one, one, on one time, I was one time. My stepfather took me to Disney World. It was just an old shack that was burnt down. He said, "Well, I guess Disney World's burned down." I think he was going to take me to the real Disney World, but he, it was getting pretty late. <laughs> he cried. Your father but was we all Jack Candy. <laughs> Maybe the best Jack Candy of all time. Uh, but uh, anyway, we do have something to get uh, something that's going to probably take some time for us to unpack and discuss before we get into our topic. But uh, at, at the time of this recording, uh, the new Spider-Man No Way Home trailer has dropped, and I'm wait gonna, what? <laughs> I'm gonna I'm gonna offer I'll up be right back. first thoughts to our resident uh, uh, web slinger here, Nick. What what is Ha, what was your initial thought, and has your have your thoughts changed as you've had time to think about what you've seen? Well, you think I'd, I'd learn not to trust the internet at this point <laughs> in my life, but uh, I had a shoot yesterday and uh, woke up early, and I figured, oh well, you know, it's supposed to drop at eight a.m. Eastern time. I'll wake up, get a nice stretch, get a nice hot cup of coffee, and indulge myself for the shoot. I'm so excited. <laughs> And of course, it, it, when did it end up dropping? Like 6, 6 p.m. PST? It was late. Yeah, it was last night. Yeah, right? Evening times. Yeah. Um, so I, I basically watched it for the first time on my iPhone in a parking lot waiting, in an Enterprise rent-a-car parking lot waiting for my Uber. And it was glorious, my friends. <laughs> glorious. More glorious than I could possibly have imagined. It gives you, it, it gives you a lot. And at the same time as that classic Marvel feel like they, they you, you don't feel cheated. You feel like you saw enough. But at the same time, you know, that is nothing. And even Tom Holland echoes that thought, you know, you ain't ready. It's at the tip of the iceberg. And, you know, honestly, that's what that trailer feels like to me. It is very deliberate. And they gave us, you know, it's just enough. Can I share my quick thought? Because I thought Please. it was a bad trailer. Uh, oh, no. But, but. I, I I thought it was a bad trailer in the same way that the first Avengers trailer, the Avengers Endgame trailer was, where I was like, it's so deliberate that they are <laughs> miscutting this entire thing. Yeah. That, that they're, so they're, 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 but there's no, like, I hate, uh, I really do hate trailers that give away narrative structure of films, which it didn't do, which I'm happy, or at least it gave away the narrative structure of the, maybe the first act. Yeah, maybe. Uh, maybe. 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 We'll, we'll see how, the, how that pans out. I, I thought that it was, a, it was a really roughly cut trailer, but it hit just the right notes to get people interested and I think that I think that they were deliberately you, you cutting it. around. I, I think that the construction of that trailer was very poor. Let me just you didn't you, you felt manipulated. No, I don't feel manipulated at all. I, I have I have no oh oh spoilers by the way. Uh, Doctor uh, Ox yeah, shows yeah, off yeah, yeah. Uh, uh, shows up in the uh, trailer. So well, it, it, and and I mean Green Gob Willem Dafoe's Green Goblin cackling does, and so, yeah. that was, that was easily it is his for me. Mom and yeah. It is his 
tackle. Yeah, it's I, him. That that was probably my favorite bit in it. But so it's interesting. I so I I, I talked to Nick on Sunday because the, the trailer leaked twenty four hours over twenty four hours earlier in the worst format. It could literally worst someone taping another way. cell phone. And and if, like at that point, I didn't know that there was this big Sony conference next day. And the trailer was going to drop. It's like Spider Man trailer. I'm going to watch. So I'm going to watch it. So I watched it, and it is the fucking exact trailer you can't understand half the shit they're saying all so, the effects are unfinished just as a note so so CinemaCon is is has been going on the past couple of days and so a lot of pe- new things have been kind of showing and people have been seeing these and so uh, it, it, it's natural for things to leak around this time but yeah for it to leak in that way was pretty pretty egregious and, and i remember like, and on the date of uh on the trailer release on the date of the wandavision yes uh, and, circled calendar date and and that's some of the stuff i kind of want to talk about and we are going to get into spoilers for this trailer i don't know imagine there's anyone in our target demo in that venn diagram that's not having seen this trailer that's listening to this right now but um hey, I, mom I, you, you should stop the <laughs> podcast and watch the spider yes this is true away home trailer um so it's it's interesting because i i remember my first thought was like we get our first glimpse of what potential story might be and it's this idea that peter parker is uh the the aftermath of mysterio unveiling who he is and saying peter parker is spider-man and, and it, it was, feels like he owns it like it it, yeah. it it feels like you don't see him denying this at any point in the trailer so it feels like maybe it just caught him so off guard he, he misplays something and yeah, and, and it's, it's culpable. It's really interesting, also, because Nick Nick knows I'm not a uh, one of my issues that I have it with Spider Man, and especially when they've done the films or any superhero film where there's a secret identity. Is there's always this like triangle, and they have to keep this from someone, and they can't tell this person. There's all of these like this angst built around it, and I never quite feel. Uh, it just feels like too much like a plot contrivance. But in this. When he's up on the roof with MJ and he's like, can we just stay up here? And I'm like, I don't if maybe you guys didn't. I had plenty of times where I had bu- got bullied in high school or I had times where I was just dreading going back to the real world. And I would go to like play rehearsal at night. And for two glorious hours, I didn't have to think about whatever like shit was waiting for me at school the next day. Yeah. So that that moment in the trailer fucking that like that's the first time I really felt Peter Parker struggle that I completely identified with, and I'm like I, I was very much on board. And then you get mm-hmm. to to Strange's thing, and I was like, and I'm or was I'm, it? or or is it is it is it our Doctor? Sh- it, it, I was kind Mephisto, of interested. Baby. Well, and I, I think it's another thing that Marvel with the MCU is doing very well is that these it is their version of these characters for better or for worse. And there are a lot of people that don't necessarily like this Peter Parker, or maybe don't like this Dr. Strange, but they are very consistent. It seems to me, because I, I know looking at the trailer, this idea that Dr. Strange would cast this spell sort of flippantly to, to do this thing. It, and I'm like, I remember back to the first Dr. Strange movie. I'm like, it's exactly what he did when he was arrogant. And maybe now that he saved the universe, he's still fucking arrogant. Enough to be like, yeah, I can do this spell. Don't fucking tell me. The, the one thing you don't tell Doctor Strange to do is not do a spell. You know, it, that, that seems to echo the, the thoughts of a, of a favorite TikToker of mine. I can't quite remember her name. The Stubbs? Mm-hmm. And, and, and yeah, you know, I 100% agree with that for sure. At the same time, he does, he does have a reckoning with the power. Um, and... I think maybe they did enough to make us think that this would be out of character. Although all I a hundred percent agree. He doesn't have a uh, night and day arc from that arrogant prick of a surgeon. Um, yeah. He just kind of become, he, he, he is brought down real low and then he's brought even higher than he was before he was the prick surgeon. So I feel like that is just, it could go either way and it could really play into what Ben's talking about. This is a deliberately cut trailer to take maybe, uh, I remember there have been Marvel trailers of whole shots that don't appear or lines that don't appear. It could literally be that, you know? Uh, who knows? Well, who and, knows? and I think I think what's really interesting to see where they're going with this is there. There were kind of two takeaways I had watching this trailer. One is something that there that, that hasn't really been talked about a ton, but as we're watching these properties unfold on Disney Plus and in the movies, there is no leadership in the superhero world at this moment in time. We don't have a start. We we don't have Iron Man. We don't have Captain America. 
God knows what's going on with the Hulk. Thor is in space. The Guardians are in space. Captain Marvel's in space. Don't invoke her name. <laughs> it's there. There's a so it, it. It's the first time where it really has felt like there isn't the ability to just like why is this Avenger not in this thing? Everyone's yeah. kind of fucking spread out and gone. So I I like that continuity that's flowing through these. But the other thing is, so we've now got and and, th and think about the stakes when six. <laughs> Super villains sure. show up at the same time well, as a unified villainous front. Well, and I think that's what I, I'm really interested in with this idea. So let's say we take some of this trailer at face value, right? We have Doctor Strange casting a spell that's going to tear something into the time space continuum. We also have Loki, who has encountered uh, Kang and now unleashed that yeah. that's doing it. We have Wanda that's having her moment. We have all these moments that are happening, and it's kind of interesting to think do about. You believe, do you believe that those three sort of uh, pivotal moments happen at the same time? I, that theory is going around. I have a different, I have a different theory for it, I, and it's okay. similar. It, it, I think that these events... Outs without the Kang involvement would be isolated non-incidents. I think Wanda would learn chaos magic and there would be nothing else to it and she would never hear her kids and that would be the end of her story. That's the end of her comic book. I think yeah, that yeah, this, I think, the I same think thing that, with that's this. That's what I'm thinking. Doctor Strange would cast a spell. Peter Parker would be forgotten in, uh, in, in this world. That would be it. I think Kang opened up these yeah. holes. And so now that the multiverse actually exists, that's what's causing now problems. Now there's danger yeah. of it. And maybe that's why Strange doesn't fear the spell because he's, in his head, he's not thinking about this being a possibility. And who knows what blindness he has to what's going on, even though he has the, I mean, he, well, he doesn't have that's the eye of Agamotto. Uh, it's literally anymore. exactly what I was thinking. And that, that's what I was going to bring up is that I, it seems... And I understand what you're saying, Nick, is that, that the flippancy that Strange shows in the trailer could be played in a way where it's maybe not Strange or it's a different version of Strange or something along those lines. I do I like think, that theory, I, too. I, 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 which I love. Well, I, and, very, and, and, very interesting. Look, look I'm, I'm sorry. I'm sorry to bring up Mephisto in earnest. <laughs> but with all of the rumors flying with Every Disney Plus series that, go, that comes and goes, Mephisto is nowhere to be found after huge fan fanfare. Well, well you well, know, this does make sense for the brand new day storyline. If you guys know anything about that, uh, when, when, when they go to the indoor sanctum for New York, why is everything snowy? Yeah, I mean, that's a, a thing we El Elsa is part of the MCU <laughs> yeah, with the there Disney. You go. I mean, Marker. listen, also, Do Dr. Strange in sweatpants and a sweatshirt, but still wearing the, <laughs> the cape is just fucking amazing. Uh, Stephen, Stephen B. Strange, as I like to call him. Yeah, it's <laughs> like, there, there's, I mean, it, and I like that you're seeing those tonal touches in this, which is consistent of 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 how these Spider-Man movies are being done as yeah. kind of these like younger kid stuff, a lot of a little bit lighter and jokey but still always with parker kind of at the center of of that well do you do you, do you guys know the brand new day storyline have you heard anything about this I do not so i, I, I yeah i want to come on i address this kind of a cool theory and this is what gives a little bit of credibility to the mephisto rumors which would be hilarious after after all of this we get six the sinister six and mephisto and kang but straight up shul mockering it but <laughs> In this plot, uh, Aunt May gets shot, and in order to save her, the, the he, he goes to Strange. Peter goes to Strange. He goes to everyone he can. No one can help her. Um, the only thing that can help him is Mephisto. And he said, Aunt May's life, I want your marriage. And basically makes it so that he never married Mary Jane, and he wakes up at this party, and Mary Jane, like... Uh, they're no longer together and someone toasts to a brand new day. And it, it started this whole new um, storyline with, with Peter Sands, MJ. And I feel like a lot of this feels like it, maybe it's not Mephisto, but in, even though he's directly involved in the comic, this could be sort of like the one division house of M elements, not the full, not the full. And like you said, Matt, it's, it's not just adapting uh, characters to be in the MCU now they're adapting beloved storylines sure. to fit their greater narrative and there's a, a lot of I mean a lot of moving parts here that I think are, are are fun and you say it's a bad trailer but it has spurred so much discussion I mean I've pretty much regurgitated every, I, no, every it, thing it, I've seen it, on TikTok or on YouTube so, a lot so, to so, talk so, about. so so you understand my my argument there I'm not saying that that it, it did what it was intended to do 
so so for its construction and for what it was trying to do, I think that they did it very deliberately. And I'm just saying as a trailer, it was a poorly constructed trailer <laughs> and that there was it, it did not the, the shots did not convey the things that were being said in the voiceovers and vice versa. It, it just did it felt way fan servicey. I, but again, I it, I felt the same way about the very first Avengers trailer, and I knew they were doing it deliberately. They were trying to cut around it. They're doing it for, as a favor for us. So yes, that we exactly. Have our pristine so 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 I, I'm not. Experience. So I can't pa- I can't pass judgment on it because and until it's all for you, Damien. The thing <laughs> exactly. the thing is, like Marvel, kind of uh, maybe not invented, but but patented the uh, the post credit sequence, and like Blair Witch kind of started that. Uh, <laughs> that guerrilla filmmaking viral marketing this kind of it could be a trademark of marvel like these maybe from a cinematic perspective unfulfilling trailers but cut out of sequence cut de- deliberately be- because and, they and know at this point we're gonna go see them no matter fucking yeah. what yeah, exactly. Um, they just give us enough of the fanboy stuff so we can yeah, geek all they out about do is, Dr. And, Octopus and Green Goblin. And, well, and I, well, we're, we're, well, Matt and I are going to do our part. We, we're seeing Shang-Chi. Uh, in, we are uh, going uh, in, uh, uh, next week, which I, days, by so. the way, I'm, I'm going to do that, too. I speaking believe. of which, I've been hearing nothing but fucking great things about that movie. And well, even comparisons to him in terms of like owning the character in a way like Robert Downey Jr. owned Iron Man, which got me really so, excited. Uh, I don't because I, I want to wait until after we see the movie to talk about that just a little bit. It. But, what, okay, I, I don't want to talk about Spider-Man the whole episode because well, obviously we have other stuff to talk about. Did you hear the other thing that, that they showed at CinemaCon? Which uh, was the entire movie of Ghostbusters Afterlife. Oh, oh yeah, shit, I, I didn't, didn't hear about, about that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> and? And. Look at no one's going to know. <laughs> no one, A right? select few, no. <laughs> no, the... the uh, uh, there's just been a bunch of tears and stuff like that online and a bunch of like just crying emojis and talking about how it's like the greatest thing well, for I, fans of that franchise ever. So. I, I don't know if she told you, but uh, Beth actually did see it and she called in with her. I don't think you're going to like her review. It was all right. She was yeah. not into it, man. Sorry. Underwhelmed. Sorry. Very underwhelmed. Grounds for divorce. <laughs> Jesus. G- uh, Ghostbusters, <laughs> Ghostbusters come up a lot in our topic and, uh, as far as my list goes, by the way. Uh, Oh, I, I, that's actually kind of interesting. And so, yeah, let's uh, let's get into our topic for uh, the episode. So this is a, a Nick Santa Croce special, which I I, I very much like. Um, and it was precipitated <laughs> by a, uh, a a discussion you, about a, a subset of this, which basically was kind of what is the best Stan Lee cameo? Stan Lee, obviously, in the Marvel movies, it shows up in every one of them. Or I mean, did well, not anymore, obviously. Um, but uh, we were kind of saying, what is the the best Stanley cameo? And we thought maybe, maybe we just do a whole episode on that, which we could very easily do. Oh, we uh, could. But um, them's fighting words, Matt. But I, I think it is. I think the idea of cameos is really interesting. And I think there's a. It, it was so funny is after you had you had mentioned it, and we kind of decided to do it as a topic. Two two interesting things happened. One, I went on the actual cameo site, which we're not talking about cameos. So that wouldn't it wouldn't be too. funny to find like a good, and I just could not find anyone that was affordable. That would the closest I got was uh, Kevin McDonald from the Kids in the Hall, but it was still a little a little pricey, no. and I was like, I can't I can't bring myself <laughs> to do this, but I I was very close to doing that. Um, but I, I noticed that, but the, the thing I noticed, there have been a lot of TikToks that have been popping up recently talking about, you know, there's a, a, a prompt of like, what's your favorite cameo? And then people posting clips that don't understand what, what cameo means. Yeah. Cameo <laughs> is. And yeah. the, one, the one that got me the most is I w- it was a Parks and Rec uh, clip. And it's it's Nick Offerman as Ron Swanson doing some construction with this baby and a a carrier next to him. And a guy walks in and they have the guy has like three lines and it's mostly just to do a punchline for Swanson. And then like that was the clip. And I'm like, I don't know. And I'm like, maybe the guy that walked in was like someone from one of these house building shows with, uh, that I don't know. So maybe I don't know. It. So I look at it and the, it was no, this guy is the, uh, does a voice on Red Dead Redemption. And I'm like, that's not, and everyone in the comments is like, that's not a, can- that's just a guy who just had a part. 
He had a small <laughs> part yeah. in his show, but there's no reference to Gotta it's not like on. he was a cowboy, which would then maybe qualify as a cameo. Kind but you know of. what? This is this begs to be an interesting question. And yeah. I, I vote maybe we end the podcast with our favorite Stan Lee, since that's what spurred. Sure. Actual, so, 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 but, but what is your definition? Because when we were talking about Stan Lee, Ben was like, oh, when he plays himself, that's not a cameo. And it got me thinking, like, well, is no, that part of well, your. No, no, no. But, 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 that, that's what I wanted to bring up is because I <laughs> oh when, 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 when the fir- question first came out, I said, somebody was like what is the best Stanley cameo I said mole rats and then I corrected myself and I was just like well shit no actually he's a role in that movie I believe like, I corrected you before you were able to correct yourself <laughs> I, I was typing show. it when you posted it <laughs> well so first, we were first, thinking it at the same time first of all just for just for <laughs> some reference for our audience out there they look happy don't they what the bras no the couple they look happy I guess as far as couples go you know it reminds me of an issue of Spider-Man I did when Peter Parker and Gwen Stacy went lingerie shopping. Of course, the Green Goblin showed up, and he <laughs> pumpkin-bombed the hell out of the place. But aside from that, it, it's pretty much the same thing. Oh, my God. Holy shit! Aren't you? Oh, Stanley. So uh, maybe the and I, I, I it's it, so it's a very fine line of how much screen time do you get before it. So being that, be, that, that is one for me. It, it is it's screen time. I say you're allowed to play yourself, but it, it mostly I think. I think that if it's uncredited, that gives you more cameo cred. Ooh, I, I like that an element to it. My my note is that I feel like if it's if you are a like if you have something that you do in your role to move the story from point A to point B or somewhere else in the story, if you were actually a part of active part of the story, that you are not a cameo. Hmm. I would agree with that, but I have That's a feeling there's a, I feel there's probably something that breaks that rule somewhere out there. Probably, but. but that that brought me up to I'll allow it. Like, okay, like, so, like, so, the, the so ones when, like so for example, Neil Patrick Harris, Harold that's Kumar. Exactly not, what I was gonna say. Not not, not a, a cameo. cameo. Not a cameo. Not a cameo. I Tom Cruise in Topic Tropic Thunder. Not, not a, a cameo. cameo. Toby Maguire in Tropic Thunder. Cameo. cameo. <laughs> I literally wrote those words. Tom yeah. Cruise. Not a cameo. I could, <laughs> but, I could but see Ben. Is. Ben was getting so worked up. I was, about, I was about to say, "Well, Ben, what would you think about Neil Patrick Harris?" He's like, no, I'm, I'm gonna tell you, Neil Patrick Harris. It's not a, it's not a cameo. God damn it! It moves the story forward. I, but now, guess what, though? One interesting thing about that. Yeah, I mean, how long is the screen time? Number one. Yeah, probably about eight not, minutes. Was it eight minutes? Okay, that's not a cameo. That's not a cameo. Well, I was trying to find a good example of like a true cameo that brought someone back into the limelight because that was 2004 and then 2005 was How About Your Mother. That was ba- it basically got him sure. his career resurgence. Well, and I wonder if that's ever happened. Before. So so in Harold and Kumar, there is a straight up cameo by Ry- Mr. Ryan Reynolds, who plays the physician. Yeah. Right. Which has the whole uh, which is still one of the best gif images of all time. The Why? <laughs> where, where where Kumar yeah. goes into the the operating room. I, I, is, that that is a cameo because it literally involves five lines. Sure, it's one scene. It, it it's got no context. You don't understand that that character's name, what they're doing there, why they're a physician, anything along those lines. It's literally just there to be funny. I I think that. So, I mean, there are a couple of famous ones, I will say, that actually do move the plot along uh, and sometimes are responsible for the plot. But I also consider them absolutely to be uh, cameos. So it, so second only to Stan Lee in terms of cameos, we do have a crowned winner of, of cameos, which is Matt Damon, who is cameoed <laughs> in, I count Scott, he doesn't know. For, yeah, so so Scotty doesn't know is a great one because Scotty doesn't know is it completely sets the entire plot of that movie in motion. It's and true, but, it, but he's that's a cameo, and that's yes. a cameo. And it's a cameo. You're, You're cameo. right. But, You're but right. so so Matt Damon is in, he does Thor Ragnarok playing playing Loki. But, he's in Deadpool. But I would say, I mean, it could have been played by anybody. Sure. sure. Yeah, Deadpool two. He's playing a redneck. Euro Trip. Confessions of a Dangerous Mind. He shows up on the uh, on the show. He's in Finding Forrester. Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back. Jay and Silent Bob Reboot. Chasing Amy. Jersey Girl. The Majestic. 
uh, Entourage, House of Lies, and forget, don't forget he did Brett Kavanaugh on SNL, where he literally just flew in for a day to do a cold open. He was not the host yeah. <laughs> the yeah. first time he did that role. So I, I think he is the crown prince of fucking cameos. And the modern crown prince I mean, that's a of pretty, funny cameos, for sure. Well, and I think, I mean, Eurotrip is probably the most famous, and it's such a great story, too, that he's literally just shooting born identity in the Czech Republic when they're, they were when they're doing the, it and they're and like, they filming there, can yeah. you come over for a day? And he's like, yep, let's tat him up and <laughs> do the shit. And I'm like, it's fucking amazing. It's such a, a great, une and it's <laughs> une that's <laughs> another thing I think for cameos that is important is it's completely unexpected. So the, this, yeah, exactly. Cause there is no reason why Matt Damon should ever be involved with the Euro trip. No. <laughs> There's no like correlation to other talent or anything along those lines. Um, and that's why I think it's so funny about Eurotrip is because there's no other like tether to anything of like that type of quality of like what Matt Dame was associated with that time. Like he was going on from that to like shoot the talent of Mr. Ripley. Yeah. <laughs> you know, it's, they were it's having to remove crazy. fake tats from Eurotrip yeah, from was, one day of shooting on Eurotrip. He was Oscar winner Matt Damon at that point. Like it's pretty impressive. And, and, and watching the scene of that, the Scotty doesn't know scene in, in Eurotrip. And for those who don't have the context, you should probably see Eurotrip, even though it's a bad movie. But uh, I like them. The, the <laughs> it's funny. The one of the main characters, his girlfriend and him break up in one of the opening scenes because they're at a punk show, and the lead singer breaks the news that he's been sleeping with uh, the the one of the lead characters' girlfriends for like a year. But and, and but and before you so slanderously dismiss yeah. uh, Eurotrip, it's on our fucking soundboard. Oh yeah, scusi, mi scusi. That's fucking Eurotrip, kid. <laughs> don't you, you don't forget where you came from. How dare you? Uh, don't be smirched. The name of Michelle Trachtenberg. Nick. Oh, Michelle Trachtenberg. Uh, anyway, Nick. Um, oh, what God. is your do you in your list of cameos? Do you have one that is very unexpected for you that you that's kind of fond for you on your list, or one you just well, want yeah, to talk I, about? I had, I had, I had these tiered. I have oh. one all reserved for music in bands <laughs> one for and the totally unexpected like and i'll just say the glenn close and cook because that, that okay. is what time point in time where that was mind-blowing but i feel like everyone knows that the the pirate they put in the barrel Scorpions in the boo box it, in the boo box is actually glenn close things like that are my favorite types of cameos the ones that you don't know for years that somebody was in there um, George Clooney was the dog in South Park, wasn't wasn't that George Clooney? Yes, he George Clooney was also okay. the doctor and in the South doctor Park. in the movie, and, and, and then it just it, doesn't get any easier. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. And, but like I, when when South Park was really hit, like becoming a, a, a super hit, he really would just go woof, and that was it. And and he came in to record that yeah, line. That's always, a great one, Nick. <laughs> I love stuff like that. Or, or or another like super unexpected one is. One, one moment you're watching Rodney Dangerfield in Back to School, and the next minute <laughs> Kurt Vonnegut is at the door as himself. W why? Why was Kurt Vonnegut in Back to School? What phone calls were made? Who knew who? <laughs> he was a big Oingo Boingo fan. Uh, a lot of people <laughs> don't that know that. It it's right. true. Yeah. It's true. Oh, God. Yeah, that, that, both of those uh, are, are very or, good or what ones. about? Or what about uh, the dead scar in, Her in Disney's Hercules as the, the <laughs> yeah, lion yeah. robe? Like stuff like that where it totally catches you by surprise are my favorite cameos. Yeah. yeah. Wait, and I think, I mean, and there's some good ones. There, there's one that, that kind of popped up on my, my radar when we're putting this list together that I think all three of us like quite a bit. And oddly enough, it's so... I, I Probably this breaks all the rules for cameo now that I actually think about it, especially as far as... as the plot moving forward, but I was going to say Mark Lynn Baker and the leftovers, uh, where he shows up, uh, from, from, uh, perfect strangers because originally it's a cameo <laughs> in the pilot that they think they've found him like yeah. hiding out in South America. And then in the third season, they make him a pivotal role in one of the, one of the episodes unexpectedly. So, um, which might be the best use of a cameo paying off for a big, show up that's somewhere later in the series which is kind of crazy how well, about well, you ben do you have we'll, any we'll put cousin larry we'll put an asterisk next He's to that, cousin he larry. was originally the first a cameo, time it was a cameo. yeah, yeah. 
How about you, Ben? Do you have any good unexpected ones or ones you want to? Uh, I would say the, the, my my favorite unexpected one, <clears throat> which I remember I had had to do a double take back then because he was my favorite director at the time, was a Minority Report, where uh, where Tom Cruise is on the subway, and they have all those like digital like all of the. The newspapers, the, the newspapers yeah. do like the Harry Potter thing where they have the, the live action, whatever. <laughs> and there's a guy who sees his picture and then looks up at, at Tom Cruise and then looks back at the paper and then looks back at Tom Cruise. And that's Cameron Crowe. And he's not yeah. the only cameo in that scene. Which I didn't realize until today. Because I looked it up <laughs> and I realized, and then you, of course, it's in a lot of articles because I looked it up is that Cameron Diaz is sitting right behind him. It's a and double Cameron. The, it's the rare cameo. double Cameron. Cameron, Cameron, cameo. Cameron cameo. It's Cameron <laughs> Cameron. <laughs> when Cameron you know, went I, to I, Egypt when, land, let my were, Cameron go. And it was like they were all together because of Vanilla Sky. Right, of course. Yeah. But so, so it makes sense. It makes complete sense about like why it would happen. But I, I still remember watching that scene at the time i was a huge fan of cameron crow was a huge fan of almost famous i was just like you were a huge cameron crow guy i was like oh my that guy looks familiar but he, I, i'm not sure and i thought he was a different actor for a little bit i thought he was the guy who uh he, who was on in like v for vendetta he had a british actor uh but i was like you go weaving no 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 <laughs> No, there, there's a guy who plays one of, the co- one, one of the cops. One of the cops. He uh, plays one of the cops in Match Point too. Mm. Uh, plays a lot of police officers, but he looks a lot like Cameron Crowe. And Do you I know what the him. equivalent was for me? Can you guess what the equivalent of like unexpected favorite film person out of the blue as a cameo? I'll give you a hint. It's a Sam Raimi film. Um, David or Danny Elfman in uh, in. Uh, uh, the gift. The gift. Correct. Yeah. Danny Elfman Shit. is the demonic violin pl- fiddle player in Blanchett's Fever Dream. I don't that, think that, I knew that that's until crazy. right now. Yeah, that's a good yep. one. There you go. Well, and uh, there's a there's another good. There's one of your other favorite. And, and, and another bad summer uh, camp movie. Sam Raimi just shows up as a random character. So. Uh. <laughs> <That's true. laughs> and well, and you've got another one of your favorite directors shows up in a Blink and If You'll Miss It cameo. Uh, in one of your favorite, another favorite director's films, which is Hot Fuzz, and Peter Jackson uh, mm-hmm. has the cameo and a bunch of cameos. Well, in, the, uh, in there, Hot but, Fuzz. I mean, Kate Blanchett has yes, the, one of the, the best cam- cameos in that movie. Yeah, the, pretty it much. It all the comes first, back to Kate Blanchett. <laughs> yeah, the, the first five minutes of that movie is nothing but cameos, which is kind of amazing, and then kicks into plot. Yeah, I think Peter Jackson's what he's like somebody who like a, a thief who gets a st- hand stabbed. He's or something Santa like Claus. That. Oh, yeah, Santa, yeah, Claus, Santa Claus, that's right. He stabs his yeah, hand. that's right. And then and then Kate Blanchett is uh, Simon Pegg's love interest that who's never her face is never shown. <laughs> one of the ones I thought that, so this one I, I queued up for Nick because I thought this would be on your list. And I'm sure it, it probably is in your list, but maybe you'll 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 recognize it. Is it Bruce Campbell? No, it is not. Well, then it's over. It's all over. All of this is meaningless. I did it for her. I did everything for her. And now she's gone. And you, you came down here to get the hot story, didn't you? Pictures of me to send you a lousy newspaper. Uh, Frank. Uh, sure, Frank, you Frank, think Frank. I'm a big hero, the man uh, of the hour. Well, Frank. do any of you understand how a man can hurt inside? Frank, Frank they're not here for you. We're not Yankovic Yankovic is on the plane. plane. (laughs) (laughs) And and I realized that that a great three time cameo. Well, and what's really funny is that I realized that there are some there are some cameos like that that are more about the there are other people talking or referencing in it, but they've become very famous cameos because another one just results in a single line, which is this. The price is wrong, bitch. (laughs) <laughs> Which there's not much else to play from that clip because it's just a fight scene between Bob Barker and Adam Sandler and, and Happy Gilmore. But I, I think those are sometimes interesting because the Weird Al one also follows through all three Naked Gun movies, which is one of the funnier things on there. But rarely does he have a line or do anything other than just be the punchline of like, it's Weird Al, which is fucking great. <laughs> Yeah, for sure. it's a, such a weird person to pick as like the. Uh, <laughs> you know, the like, it's I such a perfect cameo. Yeah. It's so perfect. Al, Al used to say in interviews, I think that that he would take women on dates to see that movie and then act surprised <laughs> when <laughs> when his scene came up. That is entirely correct. <laughs> That's awesome. <laughs> I uh, um well, so let me bring one other that I think just 
goes into the surprise category, which I didn't expect because I was a huge fan growing up. I, I kind of got into the John Hughes movies into the eighties movies. And what I think qualifies, it, it does, it, he gets a little more screen time than most cameos, but one of the ones I always really enjoyed Winning. Was, was Charlie Sheen. Exactly. And <laughs> Ferris Bueller's day or it's yeah, Ferris call. Bueller's day off, uh, day off. And I, I that always counts. thought, he, that's he, tough. That is on. That's on the. That's it's on the line right. It's right me. on the cusp. It's, on the it's line. right on the cusp. But I, I think it's cameo. a cameo. Word up. And it seems a because it seems a little self-referential in it, and it, it, it's definitely got its own. It, it, it's it exists in one point in time in it, that story. Sure, it's a cameo. <clears throat> it's a cameo, cameo to me. I'll. I agree. I'll allow it. But I still remember when uh, when I first saw that. <laughs> I obviously was a fan of Charlie Sheen. I knew who Charlie Sheen was, but I didn't expect to see Charlie Sheen in that movie at that point. And he's just strung out his shit. And he's like, and, and it's still one of my favorite John Hughes lines of all time. He's like, drugs. <laughs> she goes, what? He goes, drugs. <laughs> and he's, she goes, are you in here for drugs? No. <laughs> what are you in here for? Drugs. <laughs> <laughs> that, that back and forth is, I think, one of the funniest John Hughes back and forths of any of his movies. So uh, I'm going to give it to Macaulay Culkin and Uncle Buck, but it, it's it's a close second. Ooh, yeah, it's, I do it, like the Uncle Buck. Close second. Uh, so my Ghostbusters uh, cameos, Bill Murray happens a ton. Um, yeah. And another another shocking unexpected at the time was Zombieland. When you find out they go to see character Bill Murray. Can I play a little a little clip from that for you? Please do it. Oh my god! Oh my god! I can't believe I shot Bill Murray. Mr. Mr. Murray. I uh, just, uh, Bill, I think now. Bill? Yeah? I don't think we're going to be able to stitch this. Ah, uh, that's still tender. <laughs> you think you might pull through? No. If it means anything now, I am so sorry. It's just instinctive. It's my bad. I was never a very good practical joker. So do you have any regrets? Garfield, maybe. Garfield, maybe. <laughs> maybe one of the best punchlines of all time. It's a it's a cameo. Well, to, to, oh, yes. to, it, to me, situationally. Oh, but also to me, the funniest part is when he does the double death rattle, <laughs> and Emma Stone starts laughing, and she goes, "I'm sorry, he just gets me." Like, like, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah. It, it, it's so good. It, I well, I think, and I think it it 100 <laughs> falls into that. Like, you are not expecting Bill Murray to show up no. at this at, at, in this movie. And I remember well, in the and theater, Tallahassee is like, like he's like fuck? he's like the biggest star in the world, and they show up at Bill Murray's fucking house. It's it's such a great reveal on that one. And I, and I mean, there, there are a whole listicles dedicated to Bill Murray cameos, and some of them falsely give him Space Jam, but he, he makes the rounds for sure. And you could tell that, like Damon, I, I think he really enjoys popping up as opposed to committing to a film or three films a year. Sure. Um, but, the, but the other Ghostbuster cameo that was completely unexpected uh, was a literal Ghostbuster, Ray Stamps, in character, fleeing the Casper the Friendly ha uh, that's, house. Uh, cheap, cheap, cheap gag. What, what, oh, <laughs> I quite, I quite like Casper the Friendly. Go you got, you got Christina Ricci at the height of her popularity. From the top of Bill Fiji Pullman. to the bottom of Christina Ricci. <laughs> you got Bill Pullman. You got uh, state of the art CGI, Ben. A state of the art CGI. Boingo, wow. Boingo Boingo was on the soundtrack, and it wasn't okay. Just, well, now, now it's starting to make sense. Starting to track. It was starting to track a little bit. It was. It was the second movie with the word "ghost" in the title. Well, uh, also, they had I do, a song on the soundtrack. I do believe your wife is a big fan of that film, Ben. Am, oh, I, am, I, am, I, am I incorrect on this? I, to I do. don't think so. I think she I is a fan of Casper. I think she's I a fan of Casper. Does. And now this is on. You, on you just disparity. dismissed it. So I not now. But, my, but here's it's the thing. not a good movie. It's not a bad movie. <laughs> yeah, you're and I, not just not just that cameo, but Father Guido Sarducci. Yeah, in the same scene. I love that. That back one I love. Back to back. 
back to back, <laughs> ass to ass. All right. Yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't think Casper is a good movie, but I don't think it's as bad as your reaction was to it right. just uh, there. No, no, it's really not that bad of a movie, actually. Um, yeah, there we go. No, I, I was mostly joking because I actually like Christina Ricci um, a lot. Okay. I liked her especially just, a lot back then. You just can't wait for the new Ghostbusters, and, and it's and true. You're, you're, it's, it's, it's a very sore subject for you. It's close to your heart. I get it. Well, and it's funny when you mentioned Ghostbusters cameos. I thought you were going to talk about Ron Jeremy being in the movie <laughs> Ghostbusters, which he is, is in Ghostbusters, it, but it does not count as a cameo because he's just an extra. Yeah, yeah he's he was an just extra. A, right. He was just a porn. He's another, on the street, and there were thousands of porn actors on that movie. <laughs> <laughs> You, you should have they, seen they, Slimer they sort of past. They, they, they couldn't cast it from normal people. They were just like, well, yeah, well, uh, let's get the porn actors union down here. <laughs> that was the cleanest Slimer joke you could have made in that situation, thank, Nick, and I appreciate it. Thank, thank you for catching my Slimer joke, Matt. I appreciate it, buddy. Well, yeah, and so this is another, this is a, one I think might be a Nick uh, one, but this was one of my favorite unexpected cameos in a movie that only uh, works in the movie theater uh, version. It is different on the VHS and DVD version, but see if you can recognize this one here. We have gremlins in the attraction. Could you help us? Gremlins? In this theater? Now? Okay, you guys, listen up. People pay good money to see this movie. When they go out to a theater, they want cold sodas, hot popcorn, and no monsters in the projection booth. Do I have to come up there myself? Do you think the Grimsters can stand up to the Hulkster? Well, if I were you, I'd run the rest of Gremlins too, right now. Sorry, folks. It won't happen again. And not just a, a cameo, but a callback. Yeah. A great callback to one of the best gags in the first Gremlins movie. Absolutely. Yeah, it's uh that that one always that one tickled me to uh to see in the theaters to have a little Hulk Hogan Gremlins 2 action. And and we we are we got our second link going. That was going to be my next one I was going to bring up, buddy. Which is that? That was be my next uh my next Oh, that was the next on yours. We are we are on the same wavelength. I, I figured I, that was that I, was definitely on my list. I feel like you. I saw uh, Hulk Hogan on Gremlins two on like eight different lists when I looked up for like famous cameos or like unexpected oh, cameos. Yeah. It's a, I mean it's a great unexpected. Now I, I'll I will share and I'm I'm holding off on one one film because I think there's one film that does cameos better than any. <laughs> I've other got a film. few very obscure yes. ones that I, like, uh, and that's what I want to. I would definitely want to get into some of those. But there, there's one that uh well go let's do some of yours here, Ben. Let's uh okay. So one of my favorite cameos. <laughs> Of all time, uh, and it's weird because he became much more famous as an actor much longer after he directed the movie. But uh, in the Cable Guy, uh, <laughs> the, the a, a subplot of the movie involves there's a, a it's it's based off of kind of the OJ thing where there's this. No, huge, it was the Menendez brothers. Well, Menendez brothers. Yeah, yeah. It, it was also combined with OJ about yeah. the whole thing about like the 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 uh, just how how the popular media had just kind of circled around this entire case and just hung on every word. So Ben Stiller plays the actual brother who killed his brother. Sam this. Sweet. Sam Sweet. That's right. <laughs> and uh, the, he, the, the funny part is, is that he, he, the only line he has in the movie, when you see, he, first off, there's a, a shot of, uh, of, um, oh, what's uh, Julia Roberts' brother's name? Uh, uh, Julia no, Roberts' brother's uh, name? Eric Roberts. Eric Roberts playing a TV version, a TV movie version of the characters. But the only time you actually hear the Sam Sweet, uh, the Ben Stiller character talk is through a phone message. And he's just, and it's the phone message when he's like, my brother is dead. I think it was an Asian, Asian. gang or something. <laughs> and it's one of the funniest. I don't know. Every time I've seen that movie since like the the first time I saw that movie, I was I, that line just cracked it, me up. I think it was an Asian it, it's gang a, or something. It is one hundred percent a Tim Robinson sketch. He's like they were they were speaking a language. I think it was. I Asian. think it was Asian. They were wearing, wearing clothes. I think they were. Asian. Dude, it is so <laughs> funny. It is so funny. And that cameo just cracks me up every single time I've seen it. And I don't think a lot of people. And it keeps getting better every time. <laughs> I see every it. time you see it. Um, but no, it, that, that's one of the ones where I was just like, a lot of people might not remember that <laughs> the fact that it's the so cable good. guy, but that that yeah, Ben Stiller. And you know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go ahead and say, 
that I'll count uh, cameos, quote unquote, by Tenacious D and Mr. Show as well. Sure. I've decided yeah. I'm okay, counting fine. it. <laughs> Bob you, Odenkirk, David Cross together. You do. Kyle you. Gass, you do Jack you. Black together. You do you. I'll count. Right? I'll allow it. I'll sure. allow it. All right. Thank you. <laughs> do, you do you have any other uh, obscure ones, Ben? Um, yeah, I have a couple, actually. Let me yeah. pull them up. Um, <laughs> there's one that I w- wanted to bring up uh, that's not obscure, but just because I think that it is one of the best place punchlines, because uh, th- that's another type of of uh, uh, of cameo where it's just there as just a single punchline to either poke fun at the actor. Like, for example, I think Brad Pitt in Deadpool 2 is straight up there to, you know, this is a A-list actor. We're going to see his face for literally half of a second, and it's going to disappear because he's the invisible man. Yeah. Like, mm-hmm. th- th- that's the reason why that, that exists in that context. Uh, I would say it's the same for Channing Tatum, and this is the end. <laughs> it's great. Another great reveal on that one, yeah. Uh, w- w- and and great delivery by him also in that and then he's like hey what's up guys yeah <laughs> where he's the it wasn't get- it wasn't it wasn't a great reveal if you were emma watson and paid to be an actress <laughs> yeah. on the set yeah it, well and it's funny that's another one of those movies that really is technically full of a bunch of cameos in the opening of it that are kind of things but i think i think Channing Tatum really cameos, works yeah. works really well because it is a reveal at the end versus the other ones. Yeah, are just, he takes off the get mask yeah. and it's like, oh yeah. yeah. And he's like, but then it's the line after where he's just like, what's up? What's up, guys? <laughs> <laughs> so do you do you count Emma Watson as a cameo and this is the end? Mm. I so I think yeah. I think I think, I think she yes is. Too. I think she's famous. It's played enough. as a novelty and they yeah. kind of. Right? I, I think here's a really good rule for cameos. If the star is big enough to have shown up on the poster, but they don't. Uh, or showing up in the credits, yeah. but they don't. I think that's typically a cameo. If they're they're famous, and the, like, Emma Watson hmm. should show up as a as a name on there. Now, we can all argue about another Matt Damon role in Interstellar, where he is does not appear yeah. uh, on the poster on that's it. But then, that's earlier. not a cameo. But that's a big fucking role. So maybe that's the exception that, that proves the cameo. rule. But. Um, yeah, yeah. I think, so a terrible fucking decision by the filmmaker. I think when you're surprised that an actor so big is is showing up out of nowhere, that that's gonna that's gonna be it. And I, there's one there's one that I love, and I know it's a movie that you guys are are big fans of. Uh, but this is one of my favorite cameo uh, moments. I once knew a girl who lived on Gordon Street. <laughs> that was a long time ago, when I was young. Do we have to put up with this? I mean. <laughs> Can't we get a better actor? I know it's a small part, but I think we can do better than this. Gordon Street. Oh, yes. Gordon Street. I once knew a girl who lived on Gordon Street a long time ago when I was a young man. Not a day passes I don't think of her. And promise I made, which I will always keep, that one perfect day on Gordon Street. From Nick's cold, dead hands. That's, Will you take uh, this? Five uh, blocks up, two over. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> that is, of course, Charlton Heston in Wayne's World too. But that's another great, just out of left field uh, moment. And Mike Myers is known for liking to have uh, cameos in his movies, and he uses them often to great effect. But I think none better, maybe, than Goldmember. Uh, nope. Oh. You have one better than Gold Member for Mike Myers. I have. I think Mike Myers is responsible for my favorite modern Ooh, cameo. Let's hear it. And and it was super meta and unexpected and required prosthetics and makeup. But playing the record executive in Bohemian Rhapsody, saying, "No, the, we want to record something that have a bunch of teenagers banging their heads in the car. This is garbage." One of the, one of the best. And, and that's another tier of cameo, right? Yeah. When it's, uh, yeah, when I was about to say, I was like, the, the, he, he's almost, I mean, it cuts back to him later in the movie. I mean. It, no, no, it's, no. It's 100% a cameo, though. Well, it, yeah, it, yeah. It was designed it, as a cameo. Yeah. It's just a very. All, but that's all. It, it, the role doesn't work it's if not, it's not it's Mike not Myers. Fast. Yeah. yeah. I mean, listen, the, the rule of cameo is a little malleable. I think situationally. It, it 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 doesn't have to check all the boxes and still count. That's yeah, a cameo. But you, no, sure. I don't think you can argue that at all. I think hundred yeah. percent it's a cameo. Like there there's no other reason for it to exist other than it for it to be. It's Mike all Myers. discussion right, right now. Uh, I I I am I'm just saying. Yeah, my my first inclination would be not you're cameo. Playing, but I think you're right. 
it's, you're just you just like to play Mephisto's. It's it's all a, it's all Mephisto's a, advocate. It's all up for discussion. <laughs> Jesus, <Christ. laughs> Mephisto's advocate. God damn it. Uh, no, I I think I mean so the opening of Gold Member is one of the most surprised I've been in a movie, and I'll I'll, yeah. I'll, I'll play just the the little clip from in here. But you get that's a Tom Cruise. A, right? Well, you, first you get Spielberg. Uh, and, yeah, and Spielberg yeah. is also in Blues Brothers, great cameo. Yeah, well. yeah, and well, and you got Frank Oz also in Blues Brothers when prophylactic use, <laughs> which is maybe the best line delivery in that whole movie. But uh, th this scene in the beginning of Gold Member, you're just going to see another Austin Powers movie, and literally Spielberg, Tom Cruise, Gwyneth Paltrow, Kevin Spacey, and Danny DeVito show up in this opening scene, playing characters we've seen before. And here's a little clip. Yeah, baby. Hi, I'm Dixie. Dixie Normus. I may just be a small town FBI agent slash single mother, but I'm still tough and sexy. It might be Gwyneth Paltrow's best Norris. line delivery. <laughs> Shall we shag now or shag later? Oh, Austin, behave. Hey, Powers. You better watch your friggin' self because this is one doctor who does make house calls. Right, Mini-Me? Hey, assholes! I'm right over here! I'm Mini-Me! Come and get me! I, I love that there's no attempt on Danny DeVito to do anything <laughs> other than just yell profanities as mini me, and it's a great. <laughs> oh, that was intentional. <laughs> it's so good. It's so good. But like, now, I just remember being floored in the theater watching that. Now that's amazing. But they definitely took a page from the Pee Wee Herman book of cameos with uh, Lonnie Anderson. Uh, Lonnie Anderson like plays it. Dottie, and what was it? Bronson played. It's a uh, Brolin. Or? It's Brolin. Brolin. That's yeah. right. That's right. It's, it's it, God. It's a fucking crazy to think that they. It, yeah, yeah. It, that's a great one. Um, God, I totally forgot about the the end of Pee Wee. It's such that's a why you one. keep me around, buddy. I ah! love it. Uh, um, let me see. I'm try oh, so this is a pretty famous cameo, I would say. Um, and this is another one that I think works based off of at the time this actor and comedian's very clean cut image, which anyone that had seen the, his actual stand up would know it wasn't. But I think everyone knows uh, this scene. I, I, Is this in your list, Ben? Half-baked? Yes. Yes, of course. I'm here today because I'm addicted to marijuana. No. You in here for some marijuana? Marijuana? Man, this is some bullshit. Marijuana is not a drug. I used to suck dick for coke. I seen them. Now that's an addiction, man. You ever suck some dick for marijuana? Huh? No, no, I can't say I have. I didn't think so. <laughs> that, I I don't know if I if you guys saw that one in the theater, but like I did not see it in the theater. The, I saw it the uh, many times in college. Lost their <laughs> shit when Bob Saget, America's think so. dad, stands up and just like you ever suck dick for coke and everyone's just like what has happened like the the world has opened up and everything we know to be true is false it was fucking crazy everywhere you look <laughs> like, that is one of the one of the all-time greats for sure you want me to run through my uh, speed round sure, of man. my music acts as cameos yes, I, which I would like is this. a it's a heavily uh relied upon cameo I, I, and when I was looking for it, I'm like, wow, there's a lot of musicians on this list. And athletes. Nancy, yeah. Nancy Wilson in Fast Times uh, mm. mocking the uh, fast food uh, wait, 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 uniform. Wait. Can I uh -oh. go ahead of one on, on you really quick? Sphere? Yeah, sure. Can, Huey Lewis? <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude. God damn it. You <laughs> motherfucker. Not only. Now that, that that gets double Nick points because not only is Huey Lewis a cameo. He's, he's wearing a Baltimore hat. Baltimore Orioles hat, baby. <laughs> I, I would love to say that's the first time we've said that on this it's show. And it's got to be the 100th. <laughs> well, I just, I just, I like picturing, I like picturing Huey Lewis like loaded into the helicopter and be like, Barry, can I just wear my Giants hat? And he's like, no. <laughs> 
It's like, I'm not real fat. This is a Baltimore movie that takes place <laughs> below the sea. Well, it wanted to make sure also that he wasn't confused with his cameo in Back to the Future. So you knew that these were different <laughs> different individuals. Yeah, and, and I mean, they just wanted to echo the, the last place Orioles in, in the cellar, <laughs> going as deep as they can into the ocean. <laughs> um, Michael Jackson in Men in Black 2, which was good one. totally owning his his whole thing. Um, Keith Richards at, at Pirates of the Caribbean at World's End was amazing, especially after multiple movies coming out and it being no secret. Rip that, Charlie Watts. That Depp had, yeah, yes. RIP. But, uh, you know, it had been common knowledge that Keith Richards had been a main source of, of influence for, for Depp. Jimmy Buffett in Jurassic World, as he's like, running with two margaritas to escape a dinosaur. And not the um, only Jimmy Buffett cameo in his career. <laughs> And what I'm trying to remember. There's a there's another Jimmy Buffett. My cameo. nightmares. Uh, I want to say it's Hook. Uh, Everyone was in Hook. Yeah, I think I, even I found out today that even Ca- Carrie uh, George Fisher. Lucas and Carrie Fisher. Yeah, that, yeah. George Lucas opposite her. That that like that, that came out a couple of years ago. That, yeah, that that, that, that right. was them. Nobody knew died that when Carrie died. I think that was going to be a secret for you know as long as she was here. Yeah. Um. You got George Harrison in Life of Brian, which is great because he's like the reason that that movie got made. He bankrolled them so many times. Oh, you made um, me think of a really fun one. Is it Nick Cave in the assassination of Jesse? No. Oh, Wait, okay. what? That was my next one. Nick Cave is it did the music. Oh, Nick! And, I thought uh, you said Nick Cage. I'm like Nicholas Cage was in the Nicholas assassination. Cage is in the assassination of Jesse. Uh, you were yes. about to blow my fucking mind. I, I no, got so Hook. excited. <laughs> he was in Hook, man. <laughs> he, he wandered out of the woods. He was like, "Say, I see a pig." <laughs> <laughs> and then, last but not least, the best musical cameo in any film ever made, of course. I'm referencing real big fish in basketball. Uh, nice. <laughs> I was. Gonna th- I thought you were gonna say Oingo Boingo. It was their song in in Bachelor back to, Party. No, in Back to School. No, it's true. They have a song in Bachelor, bachelor Party, Party, but they appear, but they appear in, back, in to back to School. Yeah, with with Kurt Vonnegut. Yes. <laughs> Alongside, <laughs> they were co-stars with Kurt Vonnegut yeah. and. <laughs> as, as far as I know, I think that, I think that's still the only movie that Danny Elfman has scored, and Oingo Boingo has had a song in the soundtrack. Yeah, I believe it's pretty good. That's crazy. It could be wrong. Um, it, so there, there is one uh, that I, I had in here for the athletes one, and this is just a, a personal favorite, mainly because it has a, a line delivery. Favre? Yeah, oh, yes, of course. Because the, the Matt Dillon uh, delivery of the line for this one, this is from uh, There's Something About Mary. Touchdown! <laughs> Hi, Mary. <laughs> Brett? What the hell is Brett Favre doing? <laughs> I'm in town to play the Dolphins, you dumbass. The worst, and the it's literally one of the best line deliveries, followed by one of the worst line deliveries in in a massive succession of one another. But I just love the what the hell is Brett Favre doing here, which is a great way to actually f- f- cement it as a cameo when a character actually references what the fuck is happening right now. <laughs> that's that's also an example along with the Kevin Spacey cameos that don't age very very well, like milk for me. <laughs> Good joke though. Good what joke. Did, what did Brett Favre do? <laughs> Google it. <laughs> well, I did, and I didn't. He's I don't want. I, I took a he lot of bleach. His hair all, he slicks his hair all the way back then. He's a real piece of shit. <laughs> <laughs> he eats sloppy steaks at Trufani's. <laughs> hey, sometimes you just got to eat some sloppy steaks at Trufani's after at, a night out at, with the boys. So. Shop that Dan flashes and wears his Levi <laughs> jeans, whatever it is, Wrangler, whatever. And we we didn't do. I I, I know it's Nick, Wrangler. you did um uh Clooney with with South Park, but there are a lot of good TV cameos as well. I I think one of Jay my favorite. Jay and Silent Bob and DeGrassi, the Next Generation. That's a good one, and they're also in <laughs> Scream Three. Jay and Silent yeah. Bob and Scream Three, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, well, I mean, and so Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back and Jay and Silent Bob Reboot are also one of those tricky ones, kind of like um you know uh no, dude, that's a cameo. That's the, a yeah. cameo. But but because it's playing into almost a genre, it's almost a genre film in and of itself. The, the sure. films that that are are lowball comedies that that are all made by friends who know all the actors or are friends of friends and show up for a day to do them a favor, and you all of a sudden you have this star-studded cast. Sure, it's not like 
not like Rat Race, which is like a so some every Wes Anderson pass, film. You know? it's, it's just a every, bunch well, of right. cameos. And I, I think, but not, but not really. That's that's different to me. That's I, I know, I'm joking. Me. And I and I think like so, Jay and Silent Bob Strike Back, especially, I think, is just filled of like cameo scenes. Well, versus yeah. you look at something like Anchorman, which I feel are legitimate cameos because they're all in one scene. They they come in and you have the brawl, and all of a sudden Ben Stiller shows up as the anchor from Telemundo out of nowhere, like with no context. Yeah. Just Seth this. Rogen's only the video operator for the yeah. panda. Uh, well, yeah. no, but I mean, he was not a known. He, that's just, see that one. I kind of just a guy w doing a role because he wasn't known then. But like, but like Tim Ross with all those Tim guys, Robbins yeah. showing up. Um, you know, Anchorman was way before any. Yeah, it, like, I guess you're right. A lot of these like ones were big. Anchorman two. You know, then you have Liam Neeson and Will Smith and Amy Poehler and Tina Fey. You have all these people showing up. Like, and some of those maybe you count as friends, but like Will Smith is a definite cameo because you were not expecting Will Smith to show up in Anchor. Well, I think Will Smith is a cameo in Jersey Girl. He a hundred percent is a cameo that was supposed to originally be played by Bruce Willis. Uh, and another movie that that Damon shows up in and has one of my favorite bits in it, where they basically the the premise of Jersey Girl, which I think, by the way, I will say, it, I think uh -oh. is an underrated movie. I am oh, a Jersey Girl. No. Apologist. I don't. I don't mind Jersey Girl either. It's I, I think great, it is but... bar none. Um, uh, George Carlin's best film work and fucking great film work, actually, but. The whole idea is that that Ben Affleck is a PR guy that uh, that basically has a meltdown uh, over a his giant client, faux pas uh, over his uh, client Will Smith, who he's who he's like whatever. Like people are gonna know anything about this Fresh Prince guy. Of course, Will Smith goes on to have this huge career, but he gets an interview for this PR company, and it's Jason Lee and Matt Damon. And the only reason they brought him in is to be like. Are you really the guy that told Will Smith to go fuck himself? And he's like, Yeah, they're like, We had a bet, man. <laughs> That's the whole scene. Is they just like exchange five dollars and it's fantastic. But uh yeah, un under under George, movie, George Carlin is in the same you know, all right, man. Whatever you say. George Carlin, though, has is, is similar uh company with Bob Saget for having a dick sucking cameo in another <laughs> Kevin Hates <laughs> fifth movie. Well, it's uh well it's a rare company. Yeah, this is true. This is true. <laughs> And Carrie Fisher in that one as well. The lots of good cameos in that one. Uh, is anybody, and, and anybody... Blues Brothers is that a cameo? I think she qualifies as cameo in Blues Brothers. I think Brothers. it's a cameo. I'm not I think sure it's a cameo. about that. I, I yeah, think it's that, a cameo. I, I I I don't know. I think that's. Uh... I think it's a cameo. I think it was played as a cameo. I mean, she's a role for sure, but I think that she's just so well known. So every, know. everybody in that movie is a cameo then. Yeah. Yeah, I mean Ray Charles is a cameo. Yeah, I do. I believe I believe it's a movie based on cameos. You have all these directors. You have a including bunch of, Frank Oz, including yeah, like, yeah, all the musicians, and Aretha Franklin. So it's basically cameo the movie. <laughs> no, yeah, that, I mean <laughs> that's the cameo biopic that I'm still working on. So how dare word you? Word up. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you for that one. I appreciate that, Nick. I needed that. I needed. That. I will. I will never not. <laughs> think I, just, I really. I was so afraid we were going to finish the podcast and not make that joke, and I was just praying inside oh, that it was. I've happen. already made it. I've already made it. You were sleeping. Oh, Go shit. back. Play the tape. Play oh, the boy. tape. Word oh. up. <laughs> uh, anybody have Come any? on, pretty light days around the world. Got a weird thing that's all you so. Any, Come on, you boys well, and girls. I, that's, a, that's a very, that's almost an affected, pretty good. Fred Schneider. Thank you. Yeah, yeah it, it, it's Fred Schneider meets cameo. <laughs> is really what I was going for there. It just, it's like when you try to do a British accent and your Australian just slips in. That's what Fred Schneider is for every impression that I do. <laughs> the, I just want the movie now, like the when Fred Schneider killed cameo and Bigfoot. <laughs> and that's going to be the, the movie we do. Uh, um, so I, I do. Hop in my Chrysler. We're going into the Sasquatch Museum. <laughs> <laughs> that's my life story uh, i think nick you had a good idea towards the start of this podcast we'll we'll finish this off honoring our 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 longtime friend uh stan lee of what it uh, we'll start with you ben what is your favorite stan lee marvel cameo so i've said previously i think i like the one in the uh edward norton and uh, incredible hulk the best just because it was out, kind of out of nowhere for me but after revisiting, mm. and, and ex expl explain what it was. What was the so in that one? Uh, basically, what happened is some of Norton, some of Hulk's blood, got into some soda, 
and then a guy who had special ordered the soda drank some, and then it, it, it gets I, bo- the, it gets bottled. He works he in the bottled. bottling yeah, factory. Yeah, the bottle, blood wines but, in it, yeah. and, and Stanley is one of the people that opens a bottle at his house to drink. Yeah, yeah. And and his it, eyes it, turn green or something, doesn't it? Yeah, or something along those yeah. lines. Yeah, <laughs> but but it's all it's really well shot. And it, it, you wouldn't like him when he's carbonated. <laughs> yeah, there it is. exactly. Um. I would say among my favorites, other than that, I would say probably. I, I, I'm, <laughs> Get that I, drop. Boy. Probably. Get that drop. <laughs> Get that drop. <laughs> <laughs> what? Yeah, you're going, uh, you're going Robinson there. No, no. Uh, uh, <laughs> I, Sounds I, like Pat. <laughs> that, no, that no, didn't uh, age well. I, no, no, it didn't. That is not. Um, I, I, I liked Captain Marvel a lot, but I think that Iron Man Two is pretty good. And that is when he's Larry King. Yeah, yeah. Which so I he like, played Hugh Hefner, and then he and played Larry, Larry King, which is I, I thought was a great continuity. I, I would like for I mean I like what they do with his cameo in Shane Black's, but I would like to have rounded that out with him being another celebrity because I thought that was such a, yeah. a good gag. What about you, Nick? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was when I this originally posed this question. The more I thought about it, the more I realized my favorite Stanley cameos weren't in MCU movies at all. Um, the first thing that came to mind was Into the Spider Verse, and he had just died. And there was a very and in the movie, Peter Spider Man had just died, and then Stanley's cameo is immediately after that. The news is breaking, and I remember in the theater that was that was a rough one for me. That was one of the few times I've cried in public. Uh, but the other one that I think maybe actually ha- takes the cake for me. <laughs> you say one of Titan- the few f- few times or one of a few one, times? One of the many times <laughs> cried in public. Okay? Are you happy? Yes. <laughs> but, but it's, Very I really good. cried for this one. Nick, I cry in public but, all the time. So <laughs> Yeah. It, listen, it's what it's going to be. Co- we have to normalize crying in public, everyone. Come on, Wait, do your part. It's Tuesday. I've cried anyway, 10 times this week already. Yeah. Yeah, good. We'll just do it in the street where we're going to see day is stop. We're, we're, t- we're so two days old in this week. And <laughs> I've cried 19 <laughs> times. Uh, I, I think my favorite Stanley cameo is Teen Titans Go to oh, the movies, which is, a, which is a great movie, especially if you're a fan of the sh- if you're a fan of the show, you'll love the movie. And if it's your f- if it's your first introduction, that's good, too. Um, but it's 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 when Cyborg was a Teen Titan and not thrown into the Justice League because they needed diversity. Um, but that's a whole other that's a whole other conversation. <laughs> Dan Lee <laughs> shows up in Teen Titans Go, an animated children's film. Go, hey, it's me, Stan Lee. I'm here for my cameo. And, 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 and it takes about three seconds to him do a dance number. This is front of the screen with the words cameo in the background. And then someone whispers in his ear and he goes, this is a DC movie. I got to get out of here. And leaves. And you think that's it. Talk about those callback cameos. There's another subset, I think, of this whole conversation he ends up in a, a pivotal uh spoiler alert in a pivotal chase sequence in the end falls onto the vehicle from the sky exclaiming <laughs> i don't care if it's a dc movie i love cameos excelsior and gets thrown off the into the street <laughs> to me that was the most unexpected funniest most stan lee cameo out of all of them that i've seen in yeah. my opinion. And you, we I all saw it. that movie together with my we daughters. Did. We did sure in, did in the iPick. Um, yeah, I think sure that I, I, iPick. We saw it at Frank's. Oh, Frank's. Uh, no, we were at the we nope. were in the fancy no, theater. Nope, we were at Frank's. We were in the fancy. Theater. We were at Frank's. We took we pictures. We saw it at the Lowe's. They still have Lowe's. <laughs> no, they, we saw. We make had, it no, we saw. Pandemic. We saw it at Frank's. I, I have we pictures had, on my phone. We uh, had food to let you show me those pictures because I remember Nick and I were like, we thought we'd sit next to the girls, but we were in our own little love nest because we were in the we, we were, were in the we were in the the place with the food delivery and the and the beers. I I remember this one <laughs> quite well. I, I, I will I, I will I, take I, this I, one to my case. I, I got. I got I got scared at the end and you held my hand and made me feel better. I'll never I, forget it. Nick gave me a handy. That's how I remember, okay? And and Stop I, was it. Just I wasn't bit... gonna go there. I was okay. I was being sweet about it, Matt. We took pictures on the way out. I, I th- have them. I think um <laughs> Ben is like not deterred. From this no, no, he's like, I'm I'm gonna I know I'm right. Frank's, God damn it! I, I know I'm right. <laughs> we'll, we'll we'll figure it out after the podcast. We, I, I think it's the ben, iPick. Ben, I, 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 Ben, we saw the movie and I picked. We took pictures with the girls in front of the Teen Titans display that's at Frank's. They're two separate events. 
It was the multiverse. Oh. Oh. <laughs> oh. oh, no. oh. oh, no. oh. <laughs> I I I say my favorite Stan Lee is uh, I think the Captain Marvel to, to do the Mall Rats callback because you're in a '90s movie and you have yeah, yeah. him and he's trying to like okay true believer and like practicing his <laughs> line and then also she gives him this like very sweet look uh, like and it's like that was from, just, she was playing all the fans in that moment she <laughs> yeah was, she was the Marvel base it was it it's a it's it's a beautiful one for me so it's it, it's to have it also be one of the last ones we got of uh, yeah. of him is, is pretty great um all, all good choices I think uh n- not totally related but also just just thought of it one really kind of funny one that relates to Kevin Smith is uh Lance Morris set in uh, dogma that is a great, and it's one of the few in that movie that is. That there are little like Kevin Smith callbacks and, and things in it, but Atlanta's but that, 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 is a that's pretty good one. That's kind of bizarre, yeah. And and has uh and only has one line. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Plastics. <laughs> the graduate I, I callback. Think, I think next to Buddy Christ, it's my favorite depiction of. A, a Christian <laughs> God. <laughs> I really do. I mean, which one would you rather see? Uh, well, Lannis, 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 for sure. Said, yeah, obviously. 100%. <laughs> you crazy? What's wrong with you? <laughs> Lannis Moore said, she wrote Jacket Little Pill in like 24 hours, Ben. <laughs> That's better. That's better than Jesus could do, probably. Huh. We're we're about we're heading down rabbit holes. <laughs> we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna call this one. Uh, we want to thank you so much. I'm just saying. I'm just saying. I know you have a lot of power. Did you love Bunny Christ like, when you're saying you much money? Could could Jesus really summon the pure anger against Dave Couillé in the way that Alanis did? I don't. I I argue no. no I think the real God has a lot of anger for Dave Coulier. <laughs> I'm going to go on record and say that that's that's canon. Uh, Cut it out, <laughs> Jesus Christ. Right. Anyway, we want to thank right. you so much for listening to the New Way Podcast. We're back with more episodes. Gosh, we're almost out of the summer. This is fucking crazy. Uh, we'll be getting into our fall episodes, which uh, yeah, that's where we wear our winter clothes. Hey, how about a little uh, teaser for some stuff that's coming up? Do you have one? <laughs> no, you, we yeah. do. Oh, I thought in we October, had a plan for something episode. that we were gonna. We were oh, recording in October. We, Jesus we, Christ, really man. big shoe. We really do. big shoe. We do. I'm sorry. <laughs> oh no. Oh no. Here we and are. And I'm also just stone cold sober, so this is we really were, sad that we were this so close my brain to works. ending this cleanly. We were, we're so real, close we're to right ending there. this. Yeah. Yeah. I was. I was trying. We are, I was trying to say something. Up we are, it's funny. I'm joking. We I'm are joking. currently working on. <laughs> God, we are currently working on another musical episode, uh, which we will be uh, recording in the begin- beginning of October, and this time, none of us know what the other is doing. And it doesn't necessarily have to be based on a film. We have uh, this was a, a Nick Santa Croce idea that came up with only in South Florida because the heat will do that to you. And uh, it said, why don't we we each choose some sort of pop culture property? Whether it's uh, it could be about a band, it could be about a TV show, it could be about a movie, it could be about a book, it could be about whatever it is, whatever something that exists, uh, um, something that exists in one of the artistic mediums, we are going to make musicals about it. And I will tell you, I I think I have mine. And uh, I, I'm I have excited. mine. I already have one song written. I, wow. I don't have anything. I have a couple of hooks, but I don't have, uh, I don't have. Uh, I think you guys are going to really enjoy this uh, 80s rock <laughs> opera about the Mega Man franchise a totally original <laughs> idea i'm really excited be, about it oh you should have said that would have been one of the greatest jokes to be like uh, 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 guys i you just play you just play act two i did a concept <laughs> album uh i don't know if you're interested in this we, we have an hour we have, we have an hour okay let's look, let's go let's do it i think it's a, not enough people have probably heard it that people would be like this is fucking amazing. Well, and yeah. it, what what is funny is so I uh, I in my protoman.com. Yes, I've been trying to like open up different things to listen to when I go out for my daily walks. Ooh. So I went I went on and I got Spotify Premium and what I did was I took a little bit of things that Ben likes and a little bit of things that Nick likes and I went ahead and just You're going to like more stuff that Nick likes. I probably. I liked all of the discographies of various artists, and then I play my liked playlist on shuffle yep. 
when yep. I go out. So I've been getting into some old queen, which is also Ooh. my nickname. Uh, and then a lot of <laughs> proto men and ghost. Uh, but then on Ben's oh side, I have, I have get up kids. I have uh, Manchester orchestra. That's um, I have some stuff. So I've been getting into a lot of music and I, all of a sudden I have a Aww. lot of thoughts about music. <laughs> like, uh, but yeah, it's, uh, so I've been listening That's to a lot of, a lot of proto men actually, uh, over the last, uh, we, and go, like, I mean, was proto men's crossover be between both of us because yeah. I, uh, we both love the proto men. So. Oh, for sure. Yeah. We all do. But um, you know, I, I, I have set a couple of personal bests on the elliptical, and it is <laughs> it is eighty five percent thanks to the Proto Man. Sure. I, I, Proto Man is good. I do. I I get into Ghost, <laughs> although I I sometimes feel that Ghost is like so dead on close that it is very close to Christian rock. Like there are certain there are <laughs> no, certain there are certain songs where I'm like this could my, be a my, Christian my, my, rock my, my, song. My, my best kind of the point. Kind adult. The point. My, my best adult 5K time is Jeff Rosenstock because <laughs> Worry was my running oh, album. Yeah. I was just like, "Yep, I'm flying." Well, I, I, have, I have my Great five new Jeff Rosenstock too on Spotify. Everyone, I have, oh, a, really I have a 5K on Saturday, so I will be listening to a mixture of all of these good things go. and my good 90s luck, music buddy. and Weird Al. Amazing, amazing. <laughs> Lots of good stuff. But again, we'll we'll we'll, we'll, we'll get into more of that. But yeah, we've got uh, a fun episode coming up in, in a month or so. <laughs> we're really we're really teasing that musical episode for him. And your uh, loins. sometime next week we will have a uh, uh, our review of Shang Chi uh, as well. So that should be fun. So thank you so much for listening, and we'll talk to you next time. Cheers! 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 Cheers. 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 Cheers.